Thank you. I, I really appreciate that you stay here after a very in, intense se sessions of interesting presentations. Today I'm, I'm here to share with you our vision or our experience around a proof of concept. This proof of concept was conceived and developed by our technical team of solution architects in Ad Sistemas. This proof of concept is focused on trying to bring transparency in the process of billing the consumption of APIs. You might find this proof of concept interesting because of two reasons. The first one is that it implements some of the WSO2 modules and also integrates blockchain technology components. And the second one is that perhaps some of you guys come from a company with similar profile like, like mine, and perhaps you have been facing the, the same challenges like, like ours. For instance, uh, these, these challenges are related to the adoption of the, of the blockchain technology. <coughs> Very often when I visit our, our clients, I can, I, can, I can hear them say, Okay, blockchain technology is a, a very good technology, innovative. We have to be prepared for the future. We want to implement something with blockchain. But actually, we have no clue what to do with this technology. I hear this very, very often. And the reason for this behavior is well identified. Many companies have skipped the initial stages in the process of adoption of the blockchain technology. Very often, many companies start in the phase number four. They want to run proof of concept, they want to test that technology, but they have no notions on what blockchain technology is all about. So they need more information. This is the reason why we started to, to think about a proof of concept that could help in this, on this regard. Moreover, many companies focus on the final benefits of implementing blockchain technology. They focus purely on trying to reduce operational cost or trying to get compliance with certain regulations and so on. But in the end, if you want to take advantage of the blockchain technology, is because you want to take advantage of five essential capabilities provided by blockchain. The first one is tokenization, the capability to represent models of physical or virtual assets inside the blockchain. The second one, immutability, the capability to ensure that all the information that you store in the blockchain will remain stored and nobody will be able to manipulate it. This capability is supported by the third one, decentralization. All the information is spread out in all the nodes pertaining to the blockchain network. And those nodes are organized in decentralized manner by using a specific consensus algorithm. And of course, one of the most powerful capabilities is the automation which is supported by the so-called smart contracts. And of course, the capability to provide means to audit or to consult the information that we have stored in the blockchain. Indeed, many of these capabilities have been available around for ages. But it is indeed blockchain is not a magic powder, but having all these capabilities available in one technology and once you have implemented a solution using all these capabilities at once is when magic can really happen. So we focused on, on trying to do a proof of concept related to the API economy 
based on our, our client basis. We have a lot of clients where we have implemented API managers. So we talk that, that the best way to explain the, the benefits of the blockchain technology was to focus on, on topics related to, with API. So in this process of, of providing information to our clients about the benefits of blockchain, we provide information about the API ecosystem or the API economy. We, we typically inform our clients that API economy is a big opportunity to impact in positive way to their companies. It's, it is a very good opportunity to jump into innovation, to reduce the time to market, and also a good opportunity to reach new markets and new customers. And if the implementation is done over cloud instances, the chances or the opportunities to grow have no limits. There are at least three models where clients can jump into the API economy scenario. They can expose APIs that can be consumed by only specific partners or else to be consumed by internal departments or internal sectors inside the, the company to make more efficient internal processes. Or else if, if we take this, this model to the maximum visible, visible option, we can publish APIs for the general public to, to consume. We also insist that relying on an API economy solution is, is not a, a, a simple decision. The companies must have a clear roadmap of what they want to achieve or what they want to expose via APIs. And they also have to ensure that they have the economical and technical resources to maintain this solution. And also, they have to define a specific API to address any type of need of monitoring of the behavior or the performance of the system. We frequently refer to success cases to exemplify the, the, the power of this, of this economy. For instance, we refer to the use case of StubHub, which is one of the success cases implementing WSO2 modules. This is a, a very specific niche solution focused on providing um, tools to construct or to build applications around the sales of tickets for events. But there is another opportunity regarding create, creating APIs mashups. You can take APIs from different providers to create a new and richer service. For instance, we can take an API providing information about GPA's positioning and mix it with another API providing information about available parking spots, uh, using another API serving as a payment gateway, and on top we can create some type of loyalty program to, to create a, 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 a richer experience for our clients. In, in summary, we, we also insist our clients that they have a big opportunity because every company is generating more and more data nowadays. And sometimes those data are useful or are interesting for third parties to consume. If the company wants to jump into the API economy ecosystem, they also have to adapt to the new business models reigning nowadays. And this is where blockchain technology Comes, comes to play. Blockchain can serve as a platform to bring transparency and, and to bring trust actions between partners, between information providers and information consumers. We also insist on the need to, to verify an iterative cycle where an API must be carefully designed and also a proper platform to publish or, and make available the APIs should be implemented. And also, this platform should be richer enough to provide 
capabilities to monitor the behavior and all the performance aspects. When we started with this, with this idea, we had a lot of alternatives to, to choose. But we went for WSO2 tools because of our expertise in our technical team on this technology. But we also are considering to, to extend this proof of concept using 42 Crunch technology to cover additional, additional stages of, in the security scenario. But this is a story for, for, for another presentation. So as I said, we focused on using WSO2 modules. It's, a, it's open source. It gives us freedom to extend modules to serve a specific, a specific purposes. For instance, we were focusing on, on, provide, on extending some functionalities from the data analytics module. We basically developed a microservice which is running in the background to read from a, from a queuing service which provides information from the, from the blockchain. We will see this in detail in the following slides. It's also impor important to keep in mind what a blockchain solution is about. It's basically the proper bl blockchain network, the nodes organized using a specific consensus algorithm, algorithm and deployed in different locations. We have also the smart contracts, the, let's say the, the, the brain of, of the solution, which are programmed compiled and deployed in the blockchain and analyze and receive the information from, from external sources, review the information, and can act accordingly in specific instructions. And also, the decentralized apps, decentralized application, also known as dApps, which are the web mechanisms where we can provide sources to, to check or validate the information that we have stored in the blockchain. We are accustomed to, to provide our blockchain, blockchain solutions, implementing an API which, which serves as a bridging API to the blockchain world. This serves as a, an interesting API that abstracts all the complexity that, that, that are related with the communication with a blockchain network. This gives us a lot of freedom to implement any type of solution for any type of, se of sector implementing decoupled architectures. Another relevant consideration is that any blockchain solution is described by three main factors, scalability speed, security, and decent uh, decentralization. It's important to keep in mind that if we want to implement a solution, we can only get the most of only two of these factors at the same time. And we somehow ha have to sacrifice the third one. For instance, if we want to expect great speeds in, in response of the transactions, and also we want to have a lot of security in our system, we have to sacrifice the decentralization of nodes. We have to keep them in a, in a, in a very well-known domain and we have to, to sacrifice decentralization. And the same applies if we want to, if we want to select another two, another two factors. Regarding that blockchain network that we use for this proof of concept, we try to harness our relations in Alastria network, which is a, a Spanish blockchain network. This, this is a, a blockchain network very interesting because it, it is a part of uh, an interesting Spanish initiative, which includes very of the biggest players in the Spanish econo economical and technical ecosystem. We have banks, we have assurance companies, we have consultory, consultory companies also. And we have nodes deployed all over Europe and also in some cities in the, in the USA. These blockchain platforms gives us a lot of benefits. For instance, we can issue as many transactions as we want and we don't have to pay for this transaction, as opposite as it occurs in the public blockchains. And also, since this blockchain is based on a development made by JP Morgan, it is based on, on an implementation of Quorum, 
It is focused on, on, on the bank sector and it provides the ability to issue private transactions. So even though the information is spread in all the, in all the nodes pertaining to the network, specific information from, from private transactions are only visible to the participants, to the parties participants in, in a private transaction. This platform, this blockchain has serve as a, as a proper environment for us to deploy our work in at least two projects funded by Spanish ministries and also in collaboration in H2020 European projects. Regarding the design of our solution, we design a three-layer architecture. On one side, we have the WSO2 API manager installed in, a, in an EC2 instance in Amazon. And in the other side, we have our Alastria blockchain node installed in another EC2 instance. In the middle, we have the middleware uh, depicted by an API gateway. This some sort of bridging blockchain API gateway, which in turn implements a series of, of lambdas to provide specific services. Now, I'm going to proceed to show you a quick demo of this proof of concept. This demo involves three basic steps. The first one is creating a new application in the, in the API store. The second step, we associate an API to this application. And the third step, we will consume this API, reaching the, 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 billing, the billing cycle so that we can issue a PDF version of the, of the invoice of the consumption of the, of the API. So we are going to focus on the first step. So as, as we can see, the information flows from the API manager to the blockchain domain. When we register a new application, we receive this information in the API gateway. This module stores some type of information in a Dynamo database and also launches a, an Amazon Lambda to communicate with a specific smart contract in the, in the blockchain. When, re when we receive the information that this, this communication has been consolidated in the blockchain, we launch another Lambda to store information in a queuing service. As I said, we have developed a background microservice running in the background, and we, we, which is uh, periodically reading from this queue and then updating information inside the API manager. Now we are going to see this in action. First, we sign in the, the, API, the API store. And as I say, the first step is registering a new application. So we are going to enter some, some essential details. We set a name for the application. We define some, some billing details. For instance, we, we are defining that we are going to, to create an invoice every time a user invokes an API at least 15, 15 times. And we are entering some important building details that will appear in the invoice generated in, in the last step. So once we complete the, the building general information, we are going to register the application. So with this step, we have registered the application in the API manager. But we can see that the application actually is not active. This is because it has not been consolidated in the blockchain world. Now we are seeing an, a monitor that provides us with useful information about the blockchain world. We can see this blue bar, which indicates that the uh, information, that transaction associated with this information has been consolidated in the blockchain world. So we now have tokenized or represented this, this action in the blockchain world with all those capacities. We have immutability, we have decentralization, we have this information spread on all the nodes composing this, this network. 
this monitor provides us with very useful information. We can see the number of blocks that are composed in the, in the network. We can see all the, all the nodes where the information is replicated. And when, when we come back to the API manager front end, we will verify that we have the application approved. We will, we will ensure that once the information is consolidated in the blockchain, the status will change. It is currently inactive, but we are going to refresh the page, and now the application is approved. We can now generate the keys to make use of this application. Next, the second step, we are going to associate an API to this application. The process is very similar. The information starts in the API manager and in, in, it's communicated to the blockchain world. We can see that we are going to select one API available. In this case, it's, it's a, a dummy API. We select the corresponding application. We select the, the billing cycle. And by pressing the button subscribe, we are associating the API to the application. Again, this generates a transaction in the blockchain world. And until we have the confirmation that this information is consolidated in the blockchain, we will see a blue bar appearing here in the monitor of the blockchain, indicating that everything is completed. We can see it there. And so when we come back to the AP Manager front end, we can verify that we can, get, we can start using our, our API and, and consuming. Now we can, we can find our, our API available in this, in this select box, and we can start consuming the, the API. Now we are focusing on the, on the third step, consuming the API. In the previous steps, the information had the, the origin in, in, in the API manager, and it was communicated to the blockchain world. But the information was not active in the API manager until it was consolidated in the blockchain world. In this final step, the, the, the process is in, in the opposite side. The API manager consolidates internally info, information with their analyt data analytics module. And once this information is consolidated internally, then it is communicated to the blockchain world. It's communicated to the API gateway, which, which stores some information in, in our Dynamo database. Then uh, we launch a Lambda function, which communicates with the smart contract. The smart contract, we, we evaluate the consumption of the API, and eventually we'll detect that a billing cycle has been reached, and then we'll create a PDF document and by using an email service provided by Amazon, we'll send an email with a, with a PDF included. We are going to see this, this process running. So as I said, we are using a, a dummy API. We can see that once we invoke this, this API, we receive a proper response. So if you remember, we have defined the, the billing cycle based on at least 15 invocations to the API. So we are proceeding to invoke at least 15 times the API. We are, we are seeing that we are invocating the, the API. Now, the data analytics model of the API manager internally will try to consolidate this information. This takes some time. So, uh, 
we will not see the, the blue bar in the monitor of the, of the blockchain monitor in, as fast in, as in the, in the previous step, but we will receive an email in our email client when all the process is completed. We will receive an email with the, with the invoice in PDF format. So, as, as we can see, We, we have not received the, the notification from the monitor. We cannot see the, the transaction completed. But we are going to focus now on the missing part of this solution, the web access to the information stored in the blockchain. For this purpose, we have developed a decentralized application, a DApp, that actually can connect to both a, a private Ethereum network that, that we have deployed or to the Alastria blockchain network. This is a powerful decentralized application that provides us useful information of the stored data in the blockchain. We can check information of all the events that have been stored in the blockchain, or we can filter information regarding the new applications that we have registered in the API manager, or we can focus on the new APIs associated to to applications through the API manager, or for instance, we can consult all the invoices that have been issued per, per consumption of, of the API that we have made available. So in this moment, the, the API manager is, is processing internally the, the information, and we are going to proceed to connect to the, to the Alastra network, we can see all the transactions. Since this is a proof of concept, we only store the minimum information necessary for the system to work. As we can see, the, late, the latest application that we have registered was assigned an ID number 300, and the, and the API a number 1516.3. And eventually, when all the process is completed, Below, we will find a line informing us about the consumption and the issuing of a new invoice uh, associated with the use of the application 300 and the API 1516.3. The information has not been consolidated yet. The now it has been consolidated in the, in the API manager, it was sent to the blockchain domain and it has been consolidated. Now we can see that the application has, 300 has been invoked, the API correctly. We, we now see in the monitor that the transaction has been completed in the blockchain world. And we can see uh, interesting information. For this application, for this API, we can see that we have invoked the, the API 16 times, which results in the issuing of a new invoice that we have received in our email. And this is the, the, the price that we will have to pay for using this, this API. Now, we have received, the, we have received the, the invoice. Basically, the invoice is, is like this one. It, it has all the administrative information that, that we enter in the first stages. And also, it has the information regarding the consumption that was evaluated by the smart contracts. And in the end, you can see an, a transaction ID, which serves as a proof that this information is stored in a blockchain with all those capabilities about uh, immutability, auto, automatization, and also the centralization of the information. So basically, this is our, our proposal to use WSO2 tools and mixing it with blockchain technology to, to promote the adoption of the, of the blockchain technology in, in current scenarios. Thank you.